Hi everyone, welcome to the podcast, December 1st, 2018, getting ready for the holidays. How about you, Max? That's right. What do you want to do today? Uh, today I thought we would talk about uh, maybe one of the patterns. Excellent idea. There are only six. There are only six. Which one do you want to go for? Let's go for the big number. Let's go for six. All right. So this case comes from a middle-aged woman, say 55. She presents with shortness of breath, kind of subacutely. She was doing fine a month or so ago or two months ago, but now she's got this significant shortness of breath. Comes in to the pulmonologist and he does a CT scan, shows patchy bilateral infiltrates, kind of ground glass, patchy ground glass. Wow. It should be an interesting biopsy. Ends up having a transbronchial biopsy. It's not helpful at all, so they go on to wedge biopsy. So here's the wedge biopsy. What do we think? Well, when we're trying to choose a pattern, you know, we just look at 2X and figure out what the dominant feature is. And here, it's a little hard to tell what the feature is because there aren't a whole lot of features. This kind of looks like a normal lung biopsy. You know, we got alveolar walls, we got alveolar spaces, we don't have any significant dense fibrosis. Uh, we got a few little d blue nodules that aren't very big. Very subtle. Very subtle. In fact, I might look at this and say, finally, a case I can sign out, right? It's not one of these ILDs or anything. It's like a normal biopsy. It's a case I can actually sign out. Should be easy. Feeling good about things. Yeah. So if I was going to go on and sign it out, right. what would the pulmonologist say if I say, this is a uh, normal wedge biopsy of lung? Send it out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the problem lies. If you can get close to the pa correct pattern and recognize the diseases in the pattern, when you write your report or talk to the clinicians, you're going to be talking their language. They're going to know that you understand the diseases they're dealing with. If you tell them the biopsy really doesn't show anything, and they've got quote unquote ground glass infiltrates on the imaging, that's an automatic send out. Send that case out to Max Smith. Some sort of problem there. Right. Huge disconnect between the imaging findings, what the pulmonologist expects, right? Because the pulmonologist is, is gonna expect some sort of acute lung injury. They, they need to explain those infiltrates that the, they're seeing on the high res CT scan. And we look at it and we say, it looks like a normal biopsy. So where is the issue here? So I think that's a, it, it's a good way to look at it. The, the patient obviously has a functional deficit and this lung is most likely responsible for it unless like uh, an elephant is sitting on her chest. So the biopsy should be telling us why she is hypoxic. This is key. So we know the anatomy of the lung and we know that the airways transmit air into the uh, alveoli so you can oxygenate and this patient's having trouble with that function. So what we need to do is, with, as with all biopsies, we have to look at the compartments of the lung. I always like to start in a lung biopsy by finding the pulmonary arteries, knowing there's an airway next to them, and getting an idea of what kind of a neighborhood is present at the center of the lobules. Remember, the artery and the airway live at the center of the lobule. The bronchovascular bundle. Correct. So here's the pulmonary artery, here's the adjacent airway. Right. Right. That is the central lobular region. Now we would expect that most of the time in two-dimensional sections, we're going to catch an airway as a circle with epithelium and muscle, and we're going to catch the artery as a circle with muscle. In general, they're supposed to be about the same size in diameter under the microscope. And they should be both present. And they should be both present. Now, it's true that if you have a uh, bronchovascular bundle in the center of a round structure, eventually you might cut through and see the bronchovascular bundle coming into the lobule and it might look like a linear structure. But even in the linear structures, we should see them about the same diameter as the pair traverses your microscopic image. So here we have a pulmonary artery and there's no airway to be seen. That's the first clue in pattern six that you are dealing with chronic small airways disease. Right, and if we take one step back and we say, Pattern six, the minimal change biopsy. The things that you want to be thinking about when you, when you recognize the minimal change biopsy, the first thing that comes to my mind is small airways disease. Because the vast majority of cases of minimal change biopsies are small airways disease. Correct. The other less likely things would be? Pulmonary hypertension. Vascular problems. Vascular disease. You see pictures in the books of vascular disease, high magnification, you think, wow, I could never miss that. 
pulmonary hypertension under the microscope can be really difficult to diagnose. And most of the time when you think the arteries are abnormal in a biopsy, they're actually not associated with pulmonary hypertension. Exactly. So COPD will give you funny, torturous looking arteries, but the patient doesn't have pulmonary hypertension. Exactly. So we'll have another video about pulmonary hypertension and explore those neat findings. But for today, we're looking at the airways. And what do you think of this airway, Max? Well, this airway, it's, it's not normal for the, to start with because we have a whole bunch of these foamy macrophages inside the lumen of the airway. You can imagine that they're having trouble uh, moving air throughout this airway. And then the other thing is that the, the, the epithelium looks a little bit thickened in areas. And I think as we look around, we'll get a better sense for exactly why this patient might be having the small airways disease. So here's a bronchovascular bundle, artery at the top, airway bronchial right at the bottom. Yeah. And the artery is uh, abnormal. And so is the airway. So when both the artery and the airway are abnormal, we always blame the airway. Always blame the airway. So this airway is abnormal. It's got muscle. It's got its lumen filled with cells. And by God, it looks like a tumor. And it looks like a neuroendocrine tumor, a well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor. So it's a carcinoid tumor, right? Carcinoid tumorlet. Tumorlet. Okay. Excellent. So it's a little tiny carcinoid tumor. Is that right? Can we, can we really make that jump? That's another video. That's a, that, that is another video. <laughs> so for today, we have emphasized that the pattern six minimal changes is dominated by the small airway disease process. And in this case, the endocrine cell hyperplasia with the tumor that we just saw is a condition known as dip neck. And I can't remember what that stands for. Do you? Diffuse, idiopathic, pulmonary, pulmonary neuroendocrine cell hyperplasia. Right. So uh, don't get too over distraught about the name. Uh, all things with names have historical background. And we'll probably have another talk about that at some point. At some point. But for now, you recognize the pattern six minimal change. You recognize that the airways are responsible. And I think we've covered what we need to cover. I think so. So that's it. Signing off from six patterns. Absolutely. See you next time.